Hi, it was Mr. Lim here again, and this is our eighth video on volumetric analysis on back titration. So back titrations, it's a type of calculations. It's going to be lots of fun. So back titrations are a specific type of titrations for substances that cannot dissolve in water. Okay, you don't really need to know that. It's just a back titration. Um, actually, I guess you, it's kind of important. Anyway, if you have a substance that doesn't dissolve in water, which is we're going to call the insoluble reactant A, okay, and we're going to color code this. You can react it with a known amount of something that does dissolve in water and can be titrated, which we'll call soluble reactant B. Okay, because remember, we're doing volumetric analysis, and volumetric analysis requires stuff to be dissolved in solution. So if you have something that can't dissolve in solution, you're going to have to find a way to uh, get around that. So if whatever can't be dissolved in solution, you react it with something that is dissolvable in solution, and then titrate that. All right? So for example, calcium carbonate does not dissolve in water, but it can be reacted with hydrochloric acid, which can be, um, and can be titrated. <laughs> so this only works if you add soluble reactant B in excess to reactant, uh, to insoluble reactant A. Okay, so what you're doing is you're saying, okay, well, I have a bunch of reactant A. I'm going to dump in a whole bunch of reactant B, and then uh, if I know that there's excess amount, and I know how much I put in, then I can titrate the excess, and then I can use that to work out uh, how much of insoluble reactant A there was. All right? And you also need to know exactly how much uh, soluble reactant B you have added to the insoluble reactant A. So you need to know how much you started off with. Okay? So that's in a, in a thing, in a bit. If you know these two things, there will be an unknown excess amount of soluble reactant B, oops, reactant B in the mixture at the end of the reaction. So you've got your calcium carbonate, it's insoluble. You dump in a whole bunch of hydrochloric acid as insoluble reactant, uh, as soluble reactant B, there'll be some excess hydrochloric acid in that um, mixture at the end of it. This unknown excess amount of soluble reactant B can then be titrated against another soluble reactant C. Okay? <laughs> because you don't know how much excess there is, Right, because it could be a lot, it could be a little depending on how much of your uh, initial uh, reactant there was. So you're trying to find out how much is excess. Okay, so you use your soluble reactant C, and then you get a known amount of soluble reactant C via the titration, and then you use it to work out the amount of excess soluble reactant B. Okay, so you don't know how much is excess uh, HCl. So what you do is you titrate that excess HCl against some known sodium hydroxide, and you can use that to work out how much um, is excess uh, HCl. From the original amount of soluble reactant B, so remember you started off saying, okay, I'm just going to dump in a whole bunch of reactant B, but you should know how much that is, right? Uh, you add it to insoluble reactant A, and the excess amount of soluble reactant B so you start off with how much you initially had and how much is excess via titration. You can then uh, solve from soluble reactant C. You can then work out how much of soluble reactant B reacted with insoluble reactant A. Whoa, so many things to think about. All right, so let's go through. Mr. Lim is a pile of ham, which he's been making sandwiches from while watching TV. I'm not paying attention. All right, so not paying attention, suddenly run out of ham. I'm like, whoops. Since he's made a massive pile of sandwiches, and he can't be bothered to count them all, because that would be too much effort, he'll work out how many slices of ham he had at the beginning by the following method. Okay, so here the ham insoluble reactant A. I have no idea how much, um, how much I've got, all right? But I do know that I started out with 200 slices of bread. So I had excess slices of bread. He knows that I made each ham sandwich with one slice of ham, one ham, and two slices of bread, because, you know, that's a sandwich. But he knows there's a certain amount of bread left, but I'm too lazy to count them, because, you know, also, you shouldn't be able to count them, because, you know, you can't, right? And he's going to count how many cans of tuna he uses as he consumes the rest of the bread. Okay, what a stupid way to work this out, Mr. Lin. Anyway, if I use 0.5 of a can of tuna 
for two slices of bread. And then if I use eight cans of tuna to finish the bread, finish the bread, how many slices of ham were initially used? Whoa. So I've already highlighted all the things. Insoluble reactant A is the ham. Soluble reactant B is the um, is the bread. And soluble reactant C is the tuna. <laughs> but here's a couple of things, right? What is the initial reactant B? That's my 200 slices of bread. What's my excess reactant B? Okay, that is how many leftover pieces I have, uh, which is a bit unknown at the moment. And then how many is used, right? That will be the amount that is consumed for the rest of it, all right? But at least I know what my A, B, and C are, all right? I can actually do this calculation if you really feel like it, okay? So let's have a look. I have eight cans of tuna, eight cans tuna, if I'm using 0.5 of a can per sandwich, then I can, uh, I've made 16 sandwiches. If I've made 16 sandwiches, that's 32 slices of bread. Okay, if I know that I started off with 200 slices of bread, and this is the excess bread, Okay, if I have 200 slices are initially of bread, therefore I used uh, the 200 take away the 32 is equal to the amount of bread used by ham, which happens to equal, I don't know, what's that, 168, okay? That's the amount of bread used by ham. Divide that by two, and I get the amount of sandwiches I have. So that's what, uh, 84 sandwiches. And therefore I have 84 slices of ham. Or at least I had, a, I had a, say, 84 slices of ham. Now I have 84 ham sandwiches, all right? So common insoluble reactants A are metal carbonates, metals and non-group one hydroxides, okay? Those are the things that can be insoluble reactants A. That's nice to know. Um, and so these are the steps that you might try and remember, but you, ideally you should visualize it. Okay, so first of all, you identify what everything is. Okay, identify everything. That's useful. Okay, then write you balanced equations for A with B and B with C. Then you start with your known, your number of moles of C. Then you get the number of moles of B excess. And then you get the total number of moles of B excess. Then you get the number of moles of B initial. Then you get the number of moles of B used from the B excess and the number of bowl, uh, number of B initial. So that makes the bowl, uh, moles of B used. And then you can solve for the number of moles of A by stoichiometry and then use the number of moles of A to get a mass or something else. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. Okay, let's look. Here's one I did before. A white powder is a mixture of calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate. All right, as I said, in these titrations, it's always useful to draw things out. So, calcium carbonate, calcium phosphate, here's my mix. It weighs 17.2 grams, and I've highlighted it different colors. Okay, because remember, you should highlight colors by uh, chemicals. But you've highlighted this different colors because you should know that this is the mixture, and you can't use this until the end, because you don't know how much is of which. So, I dump my mixture into 100 mils of 1.5 mole hydrochloric acid. So here we go. I drop it into my 100 mils of 1.5 mole of HCl, all right, which is an excess in that reaction. All right? And that reaction is the calcium phosphate does not react with the hydrochloric acid, but the calcium carbonate does. Okay, So here's my picture. At the end of that reaction, the calcium phosphate hasn't reacted, but the calcium carbonate has. And now I have some excess HCl left over there. All right? 20 mil aliquots of that mixture are then titrated against standard samples of sodium hydroxide. So I take a 20 mil aliquot of that um, excess. So you notice I'm writing excess here um, and just describing what I've got. And then I put that into the conical flask and I titrate it against some known sodium hydroxide, known concentration, known titer over there, work out the original sample percentage of calcium carbonate. 
Okay, so let's do this. Okay. So remember, you always follow the diagram, you can follow it along. So where's our starting point? This is our starting point because this is our known. Okay, and we're gonna go work backwards through this line to get all the way back up to there. Okay, that's why I draw the diagram to kind of remind you, okay, I gotta do that step, then gotta do that step, gotta do that step, gotta do that, that step. Okay, so first of all, I work out the number of moles of NaOH titer. So I'm remember I'm annotating what I've got. I'm also saving my numbers, and so that's the number of moles of NaOH there. From that, I can work out the number of moles in the conical flask of HCl. Fire a one-to-one -one ratio, don't forget the equation. Okay, and I've named this number of moles of HCl excess in the aliquot, which is equal to the number of moles of NaOH titer. So now I've up to here, I'm technically up to here. Okay, so I'm working my way back up there. So I've got a amount uh, 6.01 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of a HCl. And that's saved as A on my calculator. All right. From here, I need to go to here, which is 100 mils, which this 20 mils was taken out of. So the number of moles of HCl excess 100 mils, so it's the amount of excess that was in 100, not the excess that was in 20, is equal to the excess in the aliquot, which is the 20, times 100 over 20. Now remember, this is the aliquot equation where I know that the aliquots have the same concentrations. So therefore, they have an N1 over V1 is equal to N2 over V2, which then I've just done this, rearrange the equation. Uh, N1 is equal to N2 times V1 over V2. Okay, and so that's what I've done. I've got the 100 here, that's V1, and the aliquot, which is the 20 over V2. All right, so... That's the aliquot equation to go from an aliquot to a total, okay? But sometimes, remember, you may have to go the other way, okay? Um, so now I've got, I'm up to uh, where? I'm up to here. I've got the number of moles of excess in my 100 mils. Now I'm going to work out how much I had initially of this HCl, okay? How much of this HCl do I have initially? The 1.5 moles times the 0.1, which is 100 mils, tells me that I had initially 0.15 moles, okay? So what I have to do is I know how much moles of HCl I had to begin with. I know how much is excess, so I can work out the number of moles that is used by the calcium carbonate in this reaction, okay? And that number of moles of HCl used would be equal to the initial amount, what I started with, take away how much is excess at the end, okay? And that will happen to be uh, 0.12 because I'm doing the uh, 0.15 take away 0.03. Okay, so that's how much is was used up by this calcium carbonate. Okay, I then work out the calcium carbonate amount. Oh, what have I missed? What have I missed? I missed the chemical equation between calcium carbonate and HCl. Right, but you should recognize it is a 1 to 2 ratio uh, because the calcium carbonate, you can do a balanced equation of this hopefully. Right. Calcium carbonate, HCl. The calcium carbonate in the sample is equal to the number of moles of HCl used times 1 on 2, which is the stoichiometric ratio, which is 0 0.06 mole per liter. And then I get the mole uh, the moles, and then I um, times it by the molar mass of calcium carbonate to get the mass. And then I can work out the mass over the full uh, mixture amount to get the percentage, and it happens to be 34.9. Okay? So that's the first back titration. Let's go look at another. Okay. So here's another one. I haven't highlighted this one, so I'm going to highlight it back in the appropriate colors. Okay. So a sample of metal containing only magnesium and copper. Uh, that's that. The 5 gram sample is placed into 200 mils of uh, 2.5 mole per liter hydrochloric acid, where the magnesium reacts with the acid for magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas, and the copper does not. The excess acid was then filtered and then used in a titration against 20 mils of standardized sodium hydroxide with a concentration of 0.482 mol per liter. It was found that an average of 15.86 of the excess hydrochloric acid was required to neutralize the standardized uh, sodium hydroxide. So you determine the percentage of metal that was copper. So let's have a look. What's my insoluble reactant A? It's the magnesium. That's my insoluble reactant A. What's my soluble reactant B? The 200 mils of 2.5 hydrochloric acid, soluble reactant B. Okay, this one here again is a mixture color. Why well, can't do a mixture color? But yeah, you get the idea that that's not all magnesium. Okay, so then I take that hydrochloric acid, 
So if I have the excess acid was filtered and then used to titration against 20 mils of standardized sodium hydroxide. About 20 mils is associated with the standardized sodium hydroxide, which is my uh, soluble reactant C, with a concentration of 0.8 or 0.482 moles, which is again related to the sodium hydroxide. It was found that an average of 15.86 mole mils was the excess hydrochloric acid titer. Okay, required to neutralize the standard sodium hydroxide. Determine the percentage of the metal that was copper. Okay, have a go at drawing it yourself. But here's one that I drew earlier. Okay, so here we have unknown amount of magnesium and, and copper, which I drop into 200 mils of 2.5 mole per liter uh, HCl. Okay, some of that HCl goes away, and now I only have excess HCl, something less than what I started with, because the magnesium has reacted with it. Right. Now, this is a bit different because what they talk about is that if you read this carefully, the excess acid was filtered and then used in a titration against 20 mils of standardized sodium hydroxide with a concentration of 0.482. It was found that an average of 15.86 mil of the excess hydrochloric acid was required to neutralize. So the fact that this is 15.86 means that this is the titer which is why I've drawn it going to the burette. Now you can have the unknown in the burette, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? And your known 20 mils of sodium hydroxide in the pipette. But you gotta draw it out, you gotta follow it along, you gotta work out what is the titer, what is the aliquot. Usually the aliquot is said to have a nice round number and then the titer doesn't have such a nice number, right? And anything that has uh, initial final volumes on a burette, that must be the titer, therefore the other one must be the aliquot. Okay, so there's our diagram of that. Okay, then we went straight into the calculation. Okay, so let's make this a bit smaller. Let's have a look here. Okay, so I'm starting with my node, which happens to be down here. And we're going to work our way back through this calculation. So I'm starting with my known, work out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide aliquot. So I've renamed it as an aliquot. Then I get that value there. Then I do the equation. Then I say, okay, what's my number of moles of extra uh, excess titer HCl, which is inside the burette? Okay, that's equal to the same number of things because of the one-to-one -one ratio. Then I take my titer and I compare it to the uh, initial volume. And I can say that the excess in 200 mils is equal to the excess in the titer times 200 over 15.86, uh, okay? <clears throat> Which gets you 0.122 moles per liter, or moles, okay? Cool, so let's keep on going. Let's grab that picture and bring it along with us. Okay, so now I have the num, now I'm up to, where am I? I'm up to here. I've got the number of moles of excess HCl in the 200 mils. So now I have to work out how much more many moles there were initially of the HCl. Okay, because I got the excess, but now I need to how much did you have at the beginning? 2.5 times 0.2, which is the 2.5 mole and the 200 mils, gets you that value here. Then I take the initial amount that was in here, subtract away the excess amount, which will give us the amount that was used up by the magnesium. Okay, here's your uh, amount used up by the uh, used up by the magnesium. Okay, here's my equation. Then I can get the number of moles of magnesium from the number of moles of uh, HCl. Okay, so I do that here. Number of moles of HCl uh, times one or two because of the stoichiometric equation. There's my value. Here's my mass of magnesium, and then here's my calculation to work out the percentage of it. All right. So that's all for this video here, hopefully not too long. Um, if you, we're going to do lots of practice calculations next term, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, just be uh, prepared and just have a go at practicing all the questions that we give you. Adios.